Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to another day in my teacher life vlog. If this is your first time here, my name's Tressa and I'm a sixth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. Good morning, what is up? Happy Friday. I realized that in my last video, I said I would do my best to vlog this whole week, but honestly, the week just got away from me. So here we are on Friday and I'm picking up the camera. I thought at least if I vlogged on Friday, I could kind of show you a few of the things that we've been up to in the classroom. But like I said, it has been a bit of a crazy week. We started off on Monday with IPP day. So teachers were working, but students were at home. And then regular day Tuesday, Wednesday, I took the cross country team with my co-coach to the cross country meet, which was so much fun. One of my favorite days of the year. I love doing that. Loved doing it as a kid. Love doing it now as a coach. And then yesterday was a regular day and now it's already Friday. So it was a very fast week, but a good week overall, I would say we're getting lots done we're making good progress. We're already into October, which is crazy. So my plan for today is to pick up the camera throughout the day. I have several breaks, so I thought I'd be able to take you through a few of the activities we've been up to. I've introduced a few new things into my classroom, so I'll share those with you. And yeah, just kind of share, you know, get back into vlogging a little bit. I have been posting videos regularly every Sunday, but I haven't vlogged in a couple weeks. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to say hello and tell you what we're up to. I'm loving my current position. I feel like things are going very smoothly. I'm starting to feel really confident in my position, which was something that definitely in early September I was struggling with. So it's nice to like feel like I'm setting in. Anyway, we have a pretty open day today. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, we have I have the kids all day until last period gym and then like I still have the kids, but we go to gym together. Um, but we do have a special guest coming into our classroom at 11 today. I invited our custodian to come in because we are studying citizenship right now. We're kind of just getting into the citizenship aspect of democracy and government. So I thought it would be really interesting instead of just telling them like what it takes to become a Canadian citizen to invite someone in who has recently gone through the process. So luckily our custodian in our building um, went through the process last year. He just became a Canadian citizen, which is incredible. And he told me a lot about the process last year. So I thought he'd be a perfect guest to come in. So this morning, before he comes, we're going to brainstorm some questions and ideas of things that the kids could ask him just to make sure that the conversation flows really nicely. You never want to invite someone into your classroom and then kind of have the kids know, have no idea what they're supposed to like say or ask about. So I do want to do that this morning. Um, I need to do a few tests just to get caught up on data. All my data is done except for a couple like stragglers who were absent on a few of the days that I did testing. So I really wanna get that done today. Um, Canadian Thanksgiving is this weekend. So we do have three days off. We have Monday off as well. So if I could just, I feel like it would be really <laughs> excellent for my mind if I could get all data done and entered and like be done with it completely. I feel like it's it's fine like to get, you know, test your kids, get the data entered, but then when students are absent multiple testing days, you start to fall behind on data because for me at least I forget or like I have it on my mind to get them caught up and then the day just gets away from me as it does in the classroom. So I would love to get that done today and then I just know coming in on Tuesday that all the like district-wide data is completely done off my plate and I can really focus on like what I need to test the kids on. We do have report cards in mid-November so you know by the end of next week that's a month away so I do need to really stay on track with my own assessment and stuff like that. So anyway we will get right on to that but I do have a few things that I want to print off before I begin my day so I will likely catch up with you at recess if not recess it'll be lunch but I'll have lots of opportunities today thank you for being here and sticking through the day with me hi everyone it is lunchtime so my kids are outside for recess right now and I thought I'd touch base with you it's been a bit of a busy day so this is my first opportunity but we are having a really good day I think I have four kids absent which is actually quite a few for my class this year. Our attendance has been 
spot on for most of the year, which I'm very grateful for. But we have had a pretty, I would say more like relaxed day. It's been busy, like we've been up to things, but it's like a good vibe in the classroom today, which I always look forward to. We started our day with the kids working on a puzzle booklet. I always have requests from my students to give them more crosswords and word puzzles and number puzzles. So I put together a booklet at the start of the week and they have pulled it out a couple different like time periods throughout the week for like 10 minutes to work on and the theme was sports so it's kind of just one of those general themes that everyone understands and they were working together a little bit so we started kind of a slow morning with that and then we moved into creating our questions for our special guests as I told you our custodian was coming in so we chatted a little bit about what kinds of questions we could be asking him and then I asked everyone to jot down a few questions or discussion topics so that we can make sure that we were organized and ready to go and then they worked on their writing piece so we are still doing persuasive writing. Last week they were writing persuasive essays about school uniforms so we started by doing a jam board and our first slide was the pros of school uniforms. Our second slide was the cons of school uniforms. Everybody added their ideas and that way we could kind of pull from each other's ideas and then they went to the next step which was us writing a persuasive essay together so we decided to write an essay against school uniforms and we did that together as a class so i tape their ideas on the smart board and we create that together and then they did one by themselves so we did the exact same kind of format minus the jam board this time and this week they were writing a persuasive letter so we were incorporating letter writing and they got to write it to like a celebrity or a famous person inviting that person to their Thanksgiving dinner. So we said, okay, you have to pretend that your family is having a big Thanksgiving feast and you need to write a persuasive letter trying to convince um, an idol or a hero or a famous person that you admire to come to your family's Thanksgiving feast. So we actually wrote one together to another teacher in the school and he actually responded which was kind of cute so the kids liked that back and forth and then they were to write their own independently so that's typically how i structure things i like to really model it for the class and this year one of the things that i'm doing is when we write it as a class i'm timing us because i do find that the kids will do like one sentence in half an hour and you're like no like that cannot be happening we need to be getting lots of ideas on the paper especially if we've already written one together so we timed ourselves it took us 17 minutes so i was able to say we just wrote that whole thing together in 17 minutes yes it should take you longer than 17 minutes because you were one person versus the 26 of us writing one together but at the same time, should you only have one sentence done in a writing block? Absolutely not. So that is a strategy that I'm kind of taking on this year is always timing how long it takes us to write it as a class so I can use that as motivation for the kids for how quickly they should be writing. Obviously I care more about the quality of their writing, but a sentence in a half an hour is not where we need to be in grade six. I did want to show you an art piece that they worked on the other day when I was absent for cross country. It was kind of cool. And I just found this online. So for this specific assignment, they had, I gave them a piece of black construction paper or the teacher did, and they had to draw the shape of a sunflower, either draw it and then go over it with white glue or just start with white glue. Um, but many of them wanted to trace the circle. So I put out tracers and this was a sunflower. And then we do, we use oil pastels on the website. I believe the craft, like the specific instructions had said chalk pastels, but I liked just the texture of the oil pastels better, but they turned out so nice. The kids got to use whatever colors they wanted. Um, the teacher told me that they ran out of blue. So some of the kids had to kind of um, use some other colors to fit in the spaces, but they turned out really cool. And it was a great lesson on shading, like the center of their sunflowers are really cool. So that's up on our create board right now. And then something else I wanted to show you, if you're like me, like I loathe KWL charts. They drive me crazy. I think it's because I use them so much in university. It was like, that was one of the only teaching strategies I felt like I left university with was like, make a KWL chart, make a K K KWL chart. And then when I got to this district, it was pushed hard here too. And I understand the purpose. My, <laughs> my hate towards them is not the purpose. 
it's just like the repetition of like you're supposed to just do a KWL chart all the time. And I just want like a different way of kids being able to show their learning. But I really like the concept of like what I know, what I wonder, what I learned. And so when we had the Indigenous Map of Canada in our school last week, this was one of the strategies I wanted to use with my kids. So what I did, and I created these little um, things on Canva. So I started with, we know, but the kids all got a lock. And so on their little lock, they had to write something that they know as a fact about um, the Indigenous people of Canada, whether it was about the history, um, whether it was about the relationship with the government and the Europeans who came in, anything. Like anything was up for grabs in the moment of what they knew. So this was a lock because it's locked into their brain. Then we did our lesson on the Indigenous map of Canada. We looked at the map. We talked about the history, all that stuff. And so afterwards, I gave them their little light bulb that I had created on Canva, and they had to glue on their light bulb with something that they had learned in that lesson. So something they learned that day, that period. And then we continued our discussion for the rest of the day for Truth and Reconciliation Day and Orange Shirt Day. And at the end of the day, I had them create a cloud with something they still wonder. This is probably my favorite part of a KWL chart because this guides where you want to go in the future. And I know people do KWL charts different ways. I prefer to do what we learned like in the middle of a unit or a lesson depending on how you're using it and do we wonder last um especially in this specific kind of this was just one day that i was using it but i love seeing what the kids still wonder because it really helps to guide you where you need to go next but I thought this was a really interesting way and a little bit more engaging for the kids than me just standing up with a piece of chart paper, three columns, go. This was really cool and easy for me to then go and just look and see what the kids know. Also very applicable to grade level versus me standing at the front of the room and writing things. It was like I could give them the method to write and they could add their own ideas. So anyway, this, this was just my take. I know it's not exactly how a KWR chart is meant to go, but this was my take on it. And I will absolutely continue to use these. I made them on Canva, saved them, ready to print whenever I want to do something like this again. I also wanted to share, we did a mystery science journal entry yesterday and mystery science is one of my favorite programs. I am obsessed with it. I've used it, I think for four years now, maybe three three years and I get a classroom membership every single year and we do typically I always I would say typically even though it's called mystery science I incorporate it into like our journal writing opinion writing and so I'll put a prompt or two up on the board the kids will respond to it and then we'll watch the video with the answer if you're not familiar with mystery science they send out a topic every single week but you can always look back at past topics and it's like kids get to send in a question. So this week's question was, how do people get really good at sports? And so I had the kids write about a sport they're really good at. And so it's a nice like opinion piece. I get to get to know them a little bit better by reading their journal entry. Then we watch the video. It prompts some discussion. We always learn something. And at the end of the video, if you are up to date, you get to vote on future questions that are going to be answered. And the kids really like doing that too. I just think it's a really well done program. The lessons are very quick, very easy and like applicable. I find sometimes it's difficult to find good resources for kids at this level because they're very like in between. Like they're not babies, but they're not adults yet. And I know that's kind of like across the board, but grade six, I kind of struggle with and same for grade five. So to find a resource that I really love and believe in, uh, I anyway, I will always use mystery science. I don't mind paying for it. I love it. And the kids do too. Anytime I say we're going to do mystery science, they're like, Doug, Doug, Doug. Doug's the main guy <laughs> and my kids love him. So we got to do that yesterday, which was really fun as well. Anyway, my kids are going to be coming in soon. We have gym last period. So they're going to come in, read. We're going to do agendas. I'm sending home a pumpkin carving note. I'm hoping to do some pumpkin carving in the classroom later this month. So I need some parent volunteers for that because there will be knives. Um, but I think the kids will be excited when I tell them our plans for that. 
and then we're gonna make turkeys um, paper turkeys for our afternoon craft so I'm hoping that I'll have some of those to show you after school um, as long as they turn out and then it will be kind of fun to end our day and our week with a gym class um, which we are playing volleyball right now the volleyball net is up the list just got posted actually for the volleyball team so my kids are pumped about that too because several of them made the team but I will check in with you after school and update you hopefully have some cute little turkeys to show you and I will see you then Hey you guys, it's the end of the day. We had a really good afternoon. It is loud, that's been my complaint all along with this group. But it's honestly more so because, and tell me like if your class is the same, they're always having like class-wide discussions. Like the talking is like amongst everyone versus just like a table group discussion. So I find that's how the volume gets so loud is everyone is shouting to be heard. And originally I was saying like, guys, like you're just talking to the person next to you. You don't need to be shouting. But as I observe more than more and more, it's actually because they aren't talking to the person next to them. They're talking to like the class as a whole. They always have questions and surveys and stories and it's great. I'm so grateful that they get along really well because I have had classes that didn't mesh so well and I would choose noise over like fighting <laughs> any day. So it is such a small problem and I need to just get over it. But it is hard like when your door is closed and you're in here and there's like 27 of us by the time we're in here, we're all in here and it just feels like hot and loud and it's just a lot. But anyway, I did take a minute to get like a breather and I just went and like got new paper for my paper sorter um, because I never like take paper from the cupboards all year. I just let my kids use it from here. The only color I forgot is blue. So I'm gonna do that before I go home so that that is done. And then I know that we have all the colors that we're going to need for like various art projects. Um, I do buy my own too and stock that up sometimes, but um, when you don't have to buy it, that's great as well. <laughs> So I did end up sending the note home about pumpkin carving. I decided, I did this before COVID, like several years ago, when my classroom was out in the portable outside and it was so much fun. But it's great because pumpkins are so like affordable that you can get a bunch of them and everybody can participate. Whereas some seasonal things are just expensive and it's hard to get everybody to participate. So I did, last time I just bought all the pumpkins for the class and that was not a big deal at all. But this year I decided like, I could totally involve parents in this. Um, it's one thing that we're really trying to do now that COVID is kind of like over. <laughs> um, it's one of the things that we're trying to do is like involve families and parents more in what we're doing in the classroom. So I did kind of put two options on here. Well, three, because one of the options is like, no, sorry, I can't. But I just said like, hey, here's what we're gonna do, pumpkin carving in the classroom. We would love some support with this. And then I just put three boxes. One was like, I'm able to donate a pumpkin. One was I'm able to donate my time to come in and help. And then the last one was, sorry, I can't help this time. Um, and I wanna try to do like a few of these activities. It is hard um, in the upper grades. Like when I taught the younger grades, I invited parents in all the time to read with the kids, do crafts with us. Like it was always just so nice to have extra hands whereas in the upper grades like the kids are so self-sufficient that you don't need parents to come in as much but they are still kids they are still that elementary age where it's so nice to have the opportunity to involve parents so I would actually love to hear if you leave a comment down below how you involve parents in your classroom because I would like some new ideas um, I love having parents come in and I know as a child I always loved having my parents come in my mom like volunteered for everything in my classroom um, and my dad's a teacher himself, so I loved having them come in. It was like, it just felt like the most special guest was in your classroom. So I would love to get some more ideas. I also am kind of thinking about creating something, whether it be a website or like a Facebook page. I'm not sure. I think website's probably the way to go, but Facebook is just so like accessible and easy to use. Um, Anyway, the, the purpose that I want it for is to just be able to put like quick posts up of like what we're up to, um, a picture or two of like what's happening in the classroom. So I was thinking like maybe Facebook and that way like I could just create like a private group and parents could join. The only thing is, is like I also want to protect my pro privacy, the kids privacy, parents privacy. So I would need to like make sure that I like got permission um, from all the parents for all these things. And I don't mind doing that. I don't like foresee any issues. 
Um, there's some classes or, or students that you need to be more careful with. Um, but of course I would make sure that like all the settings were set to private and it was like you had to be a part of the group to see anything. But I was also thinking like maybe a class website where I could put that kind of stuff. But I thought like even just that would allow me to share more versus everything being like on Remind or via email. This would just be a quick post and then it's kind of like content, right? Like if you want to consume it, go ahead, search the page, find the stuff, like it all, save the pictures if your child's in it, that kind of thing. But if you don't want, to, want it, then you don't have to follow, right? It's like anything social media related. Um, if you're not interested, like unfollow. <laughs> so that is something I'm thinking of. And I have tried to do that in the past and it just kind of never really happened. But the cool thing with grade six is, is that I could involve them in some way. Um, I love teaching them how to use technology or, or just allowing them to experiment with technology too because I know that their whole world is technology and they're really good at it. So any of those kinds of opportunities where you use it in like a controlled way is nice. But anyway, that was a bit of a rant. But that's where my head's at with that. Like I would really like to involve parents more, but I don't have great ideas as to how to do it for, other than like the holiday seasons like I find it quite easy to invite them into the classroom and into the school around the holidays but I don't want it to just be like parent teacher interviews and that's the only time we talk um and I don't like everything to be like formal discussions I do like the informal conversations and anyway um we did put a post on like our school Facebook page with um our custodian who came in today and it, it like blew up he was like I'm famous <laughs> Like, yeah, absolutely. So um, I do like that people are able to see what's happening in the school on the school Facebook page, but I just don't think my class needs to be like the only class featured on there. So I'd like something more like personal. Anyway, if you have any ideas or you do something in your classroom, I'm obviously looking for feedback. So leave me some comments below. I would love to hear your experience, um, good or bad for sure. But I thought I would um, take you around the classroom, show you a couple of the turkeys that we made. They were pretty cute. Um, I gave the kids some direction. That's probably how I would structure most of my crafts. It's like, here's some direction, some guidance, and then I kind of back off um, when it's loud and energetic and you're giving them the chance to just chat and have fun with it. I don't like to like hover and make sure it happens a certain way. I do like to give them some creative freedom, but they, they're super cute. Um, but we did have to use liquid glue and the hot glue gun. So I told them to just leave them out on their desk to either dry or cool off. Um, but I'll show you how they turned out. All right, I just got, grabbed a couple random ones that are close to me, but super cute. So if you can tell they traced their foot, I told them they had to have socks on to be able to do this if they weren't wearing socks. I also made the point of being like, if you're not wearing socks, that's somewhat unhygienic, so like gross. Um, but if you are not wearing socks, you do need to get a partner to trace it, but they traced their foot as like the turkey body. Some of them ended up cutting it to a different size, which I'll show you in a second, because um, they wanted their turkey to be smaller. Again, that creative freedom thing. But they did just put, these are all separate, but I cut the strips. Usually I would have my kids cut the strips because they're in grade six, but we were a little short on time because we did have gym and lots of staples were on the go in the classroom. I have a lot of staplers always because, you know, they share, but <clears throat> it is nice to have options as well. So this is one of the examples of like one of the smaller ones. It was just on the desk um, next to me. But again, he or she wanted to just have a smaller turkey so um they had originally traced their foot and then just cut it smaller to fit we also learned that this thing is called a waddle which none of us knew or at least none of us shared if we knew we had originally thought it was called a goblet and we were like wait if a turkey says gobble is that why we think that and i was like i don't think that's right so we looked it up it's called a waddle like w-a-t-t-l-e so interesting fact if you didn't know that maybe you do and it was just me but if it was just me it was my whole class and we learned that today I also wanted to show you this we did this earlier this week sorry there's a glare but we made partners I'm always looking for new ways for the kids to get in partners I do like a milling to music partner thing all the time and anytime music is playing the kids know to just like get up and go but I kind of wanted a new thing to do so I passed I got this for free on teachers pay teachers and I um, just took like a screenshot of it so I could put multiple on each page because they come as like a full page but my kids just needed about half a page so we put two per page and then they each got one anyway it just has the name of the app and I put a random um partner group generator website up on the smart board and I put all the kids names in 
and then we clicked go and it gives them a partner or in our case because of how many kids we had there was one group of three always and the kids so i call out itunes everyone's going to write on itunes and so whose ever name comes up with theirs um they write their partner's name on itunes so then we called out angry birds i clicked go whoever's name came up with theirs they wrote that down so now um i'm going to laminate them hook them onto their desk and then moving forward anytime we need to get in partners not anytime I shouldn't say that I'm going to use it exclusively but if we do need partners I could say okay grab your candy crush partner for this game and they go in they look at their little sheet quickly and then they go and find that person um I have tried just doing it like okay iTunes and everybody goes and finds a partner in the classroom writes that person's name down but I just found somebody was always left out so it's so much easier to just put it up on the board and they don't get a choice it's like you just write that person's name down um but it does make it does mean that there's going to be some repeats so potentially you will get the same partner multiple times but on this specific example, there's 15 apps. So there are 15 different apps that I can call out for them to have partners. And you would also be able to do something like have them throw this one away in like January and make a new one um, for the second half of the year. So if you did feel like somebody was getting with the same partner every single time, you can mix it up. Um, but yeah, just quick and easy because you can hook it to their desk and off they go. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that is absolutely it for me today. It was a bit of a busy day. I don't feel like I had that much to share with you, um, partly because I just didn't even get the chance to talk to you till lunch, but that just seems to be my life now. I know I said in my last vlog that maybe if I had like a body cam or, cam or something, I would be a better vlogger, but here we are and this is what we're working with. So I wanted to make sure that I met my Sunday deadline and got my video up. So I hope you were able to enjoy it either way. I always love starting my weekend mornings watching YouTube with a cup of coffee and sometimes I avoid the teacher videos because I'm just like not in the mood for thinking about school and other times I go on like a binge of teaching videos because I just need more ideas for my classroom. Um, but it is a good mix for both. Either way, I hope I was able to give you some ideas or you just enjoyed hanging out with me today. Thank you for always being here and supporting me. If you did enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up because it truly supports me and my channel here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not already so you can follow along with my teaching journey this year and I will see you in my next video.